There was a lot of hype. There's a lot of word of mouth. Uh, because of these high sales, people started getting into the space as well, thinking that it could be an overnight success for them. They could make a lot of money. So we had a lot of people come in that maybe weren't so serious about making art. And so it just created a huge sort of a market. With the opening up of things post-COVID, we had less people at their computers all the time, so there was also less attention. So we're in a very attention economy as well. So if you're on the Twitter feed, if you're marketing, if you're out there, if you're talking about your work, there might be more sales. Ethereum will fluctuate as well, attention will fluctuate as well, but what we found was those that have been in the space since the beginning are really fine-tuning their craft. There's been the introduction of AI now as well, not just AI as to replace the artist, but AI as a tool for the artist. <laughs> There was, I think, a, a group that had a belief in this as an investment. Um, and I think that that belief has been uh, rather sorely tested over the course of you know, the, the last 12 to 18 months. Um, so uh, I think that there is now perhaps a more um, honest assessment about NFTs and about what they might mean and, and so on. It's not you know, the, the wild enthusiasm and, and the almost emotional um, drivers. That's what's now missing from the NFT market, which in the long term, I think, is only a healthy thing. You, you need to have a, a proper assessment, um, not hype. Well, you know, NFT is, uh, is a medium rather than a topic, you know, so there's surely art artists who are working with NFTs right now, but we don't see any at the fair right now, so maybe we'll see some more in the future. Uh, NFTs, you know, that phenomenon is probably a very good way of uh, encoding financial instruments and probably not a very exciting way of actually living with art. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think the, you know, the, uh, the gas has gone out of the balloon.